the way we interpret our things is the way we look at our perspectives. It's not about somebody being blind or physically challenged. It's about understanding that we all do things, but in a different manner. It's really important in today's time to embrace difference, to be part of that. My first interaction with disability was when my mom became partially sighted. That was the first time I realized what is it to share a space with somebody with a special need. How things change for you, how the society changes, the social stigma associated with disability. You suddenly start thinking about different ways in which people approach you. Being a heritage architect, museums were a very important part of my travel. And I would always wonder how my mom or anybody who was visually impaired would experience these places. Because you'd always find this signage which would say, please do not touch, please stay away from this place. Touch is the medium through which they understand things. Touch is a medium through which they access those ideas and get the feeling of that space. They experience things like that. That's when my journey began to explore the power of touch. What you see here is my first project with the National Museum. We created a gallery where you could actually come in and touch objects in the museum. Even though you were visually impaired or not, everybody was allowed to come and touch and experience that place. It is wonderful to see how people started negotiating the space, how the barriers broke over there. This gave me a first hand experience to understand how people with visual impairment think. What do they make out of that? Though creating tactile models were an easier task, but the real challenge came in when we started looking at paintings. A flat 2D dimensional painting, how do you change that? How do you make it accessible to those who can't see? What would you do in that to make it tactile? We started experimenting. We started looking at different things and exploring. And after that, with the team of the City Palace Museum in Jaipur, we created a series of tactile miniature paintings. Along with the team, we even designed India's first museum braille book. It's unique because it has braille, it has large script font for those with low vision and tactile images. Like how we know to look at something from top to bottom, it even tells them that experience the painting or the piece from top to bottom. It guides them in a way and makes them more independent in a site like a museum and have a greater experience. It was not only that, we even designed a model of the city of Jaipur. For them to understand what does it mean to live in a city which is grid-like, where you always have straight roads, or the importance of a fortification wall for a, such a wealthy state, the importance of protecting its people. Along with the objects and the pieces in the museum, we even made sure the spaces were accessible, so that anybody on a wheelchair could easily come in and experience the whole museum holistically. This experience gave me a chance to actually create Pakistan's first museum braille book for State Bank Museum in Karachi. This is a very important project for me because I feel in a very, very small way, I've tried to blur the borders between the two countries. <laughs> Failure and critical feedback has been really important for me. I do not have a textbook like how other courses and vocations have. My critical feedback interaction with students has been the most important source and resource. While we were conducting an art work, a kid came and told me, Bhaiya, Khali line kyu touch kar rahe hum? Hame batao na uske andar kya hai? Matlab, oh kya paint hai? What is the paint over there? What is the surface quality? What is the texture over there? Oh kaise feel hota hai? Oh kya hota hai? And that led to creating Abhas. Abhas is India's first art education and appreciation program for blind and visually impaired. We are very lucky that we have support of DAG Modern, a gallery in New York and Delhi, to support this. They allow us to use their paintings as prototypes and create tactile reproductions. These reproductions are placed right next to the original works. So they're like how you and me can go easily in a gallery and see them, even they can go around easily and touch them, feel them, experience what it is. There's a peacock in there, they can experience a peacock feather. There is a jewelry, there's a goddess in that, they can feel the jewelry and experience how 
gracious she is over there. That's the beauty of touch. And that's how they experience things. Not only stopping there, we went further and developed braille books for them. These books give them an idea about different techniques, different Indian masters, and how their successes have helped shape the art perspective and cultural landscape of India. Textures, materials was quite interesting. We thought, why not introduce smell? Why not introduce something which they can hear, the audio into it? This picture is from our artwork that we conducted in Malaysia. Here you can see students are actually smelling the painting to understand what the painting is about. There is an audio description which tells him that what is it, what's happening over there. And these audio descriptions are there when we are not conducting the work, otherwise we do it ourselves. We would sit with them, it's an August gathering, like you would just have them and do have great discussions. And when they are touching it, they'll come up with quite interesting questions. Observation is my another teacher. I have a very weird habit of writing down things, maybe on my hand, maybe on a small tissue paper, maybe just on a bus ticket that I have. I had a chance to visit a very important blind school over here in Delhi. While I was waiting for the principal, I was happy that he took some time, I heard two students sit and talk. They were trying to figure out what was there on that card. What ID card? What is that small glossy picture? Over there, what is that thing? It was their photograph. They were not able to understand what is that thing that was stuck over there. What was it? And that's when I realized that photography is a medium which we have not explored. So with Serendipity Arts Festival, we for the first time created tactile photographs right next to the original photographs in the space. These photographs were titled As We See Us and very apt for our thing, like how we see us, but through the medium of touch. We even conduct other tactile walks of the artworks which are on display, where we guide them, we talk to them about different materials, the styles in which the artist has created the works, and what was their story behind that. The journey of please do not touch, to getting museums to put up signs like please touch, has been quite interesting. We often get people who come and say, we think there is a grammatical mistake, you've forgotten not. And we're like, no, you please touch, like it's something for you to touch. And the excitement that they show after that, it's amazing. They just feel so free in that space. It's a barrier which is broken for them. We even started conducting blindfold walks for people. These blindfold walks have been very important. We do them with schools, with colleges, with corporates, as part of their HR training. With CSRs, it's a medium to talk about disability sensitization and awareness. It's about what you feel for being visually impaired for five minutes, what something some people are living with. It became a great source to talk to people about that, what they may or may not in their lives understand, but it is important to be very inclusive about. Finally, I'd like to talk up, just end with one statement. The journey of volunteering with the National Museum to becoming a UNESCO consultant for World Heritage Sites on Accessibility has not been an easy one. But yes, when I see the smiles on their face, I do feel that I've, made, I've done something, I've made that bit of a difference to make this world a livable space. So, students and my fellow friends, do whatever you do, do whatever you like. Do it with compassion, do it with strong passion, and do it with a touch of empathy. Thank you.